Okay, so 12.7, we're going to dive into systems of inequalities. So far we've done a lot of systems of equalities, right? Systems of equations, but now we're going to take a look at inequalities. All right, so a couple examples of inequalities. We're talking here two variables. We've got an x, we've got a y, and then an inequality, a less than, a greater than, right? Just not an equal sign just by itself. So we're going to do some graphing with those. So first we'll graph it by hand. So, 2x minus y is greater than 5. The trick here is get y by itself. y greater than, this is still a negative, negative 2x plus 5. If we divide by the negative, we remember we have to switch the inequality. 2x minus 5, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and graph this. Pretend that this is an equal sign when we graph it. So we'll go down 5. We'll make our dot. We're going to go up 2, we're going to go over 1 for our slope, and we can connect this. Now, before we connect it, if it is an inequality that has a less than, greater than, or equal to, we'll draw a solid line. But since this inequality, less than, doesn't have an equals, we're going to do a dashed line. All right, so dashed line. Then we need to say to ourselves, okay, since it's an inequality, we're going to shade an entire region of the graph. We're going to either shade above or below. All right? And since y is less than, we're going to shade below. All right? So if you stand on the line and go down, we're going to shade everything below this line. The other way you can do this, if you're not sure, is pick a point, any point you want, that's not on the graph. So an easy one here is 0, 0. Okay? Let's check it. We can go back to the original, or we can do it from the changed equation. 0 is greater than 2 times 0 minus 5. Is 0 less than negative 5? No. All right, so this dot is not in the proper region, so we're not going to shade on that side of the dotted line. All right, so that makes sense because we are going to be shading down here. All right, so you're going to graph by hand. You're going to shade one section. Try problem 15. Okay, so there's some steps just walking through what I just said. Replace the inequality with an equal sign and graph, and then pick a test point. Okay, or you can remember that if you're less than y, you shade below. Greater than y, you shade above. Okay, let's try one more graphing an inequality. We've got an x squared this time. We can still handle that. y is less than x squared minus 2. All right, so x squared minus 2. I'm going to do that. So we know our vertex here is at negative 2 if x is 0. And I'm just going to make a quick t table. If x is 0, y is negative 2. What about if x is 1? If x is 1, then 1 squared minus 2 is negative 1. And symmetry, we're also going to have that. Negative 1 is negative 1. And how about what if x is 2? Then it would be 4 minus 2. Right. Now, again, there is no equal sign here, so we need to draw our graph using dotted lines. Okay. And y is less than, so we need to be below, use a different color here, below our dotted lines everywhere. Okay. So we're going to shade everything that would be below our dotted lines, everything on the outside of them. Okay. All right, so knowing that, try problem 17. And just a hint on 17, x squared plus y squared gives you a circle. All right, make a t-table doing 17, but you should get a circle on 17 if you're doing it right. Okay, so linear inequalities, no exponents other than 1ax plus by is less than or greater than c. We're going to talk about half planes. We're going to take our coordinate plane and divide it in two with your line. And then you're either shading above or below. Like we've seen already, if I jump back here to this problem. Right? We got a half plane. We shaded the half plane that was below the line. Okay? So let's graph a couple of these really quickly. We can do these ones fairly quickly. And I'm actually going to do b first. This is negative 3x plus 0. So the intercept is at 0. We'll go down 3 to the right 1. Connect our line with a solid line this time because it's less than or equal to. 
And then we're below the line. Let's shade below the line. If we were standing on the line, we would have to go down to get into this region. Okay. Y is equal to 5 would look like this. 2, 3, 4, 5. Remember this is that it's a horizontal line. Dotted because it's not equal to. And same deal. We're going to shade. But this time it's the first time it's been greater than. We're going to shade above. Y is greater than. Shade the region above. All right, problem 13. Okay, so now how can we use a graphing utility to help us out here? Okay, now you're going to have to bear with me a little bit here because the graphing calculator I have does not shade and some of yours won't either. Some of yours will, but we can still use a graphing utility here. The key on graphing using graphing utility is to get y by itself. So here we're going to say 3y is less than or equal to 2x plus 6. And so y is less than or equal to 2 thirds x plus 2. Let's go ahead and throw that into our graphing calculator. y equals 2 thirds x plus 2. And if we go ahead and graph that, there's our line. So we can sketch that. And we're going to shade on this one. y is less than, it's a solid line. We would shade below. Okay. Now, some of you have the newer, fancier calculators, and if you go into y equals, and you sit right here, if you go second math, where it says test, you can put in the operators for inequality. If we did that, you see mine doesn't change, yours will, and then if you have the newer versions, when you graph it, it will shade the region for you. Okay, so if your calculator does that, fantastic. Otherwise, just rely on less than is below the line, greater than is above. Try problem 15. Okay, graph a system of inequalities. Now what happens if we have multiple lines here? Okay, we'll do it first by hand and then with the calculator. Equation 1, I'm going to get by itself. y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 5. And equation 2, same thing. y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 10. We're going to graph both of these on the same, uh, same coordinate plane. I'm going to go up 5. And let's use red for this graph so we can see it with colors. We're going to go down three, one, two, three, and over one, and connect with a solid line. And then the next one we're going to go down ten. Okay, and let's go ahead and use green for this one. So we make a dot at negative ten. We're going to go up two over one, and with a solid line here, connect those dots. Okay. Now, I like to use the arrows here just to figure this out. On our second equation, we're greater than. So we're going to go above. On our first equation, we were less than. So we're going to shade below. You have one, two, three, four regions. If I extended this out a little bit, it's easier to see. You need to pick which one to shade. Section one is the correct answer because it's below the red line and above the green line. Okay, So we would shade that section. All right, how about if we use the graphing utility? Same deal, we're just going to graph this for y1. So we're going to have y equals OK, so sorry about that. We had some senior project questions that had to be answered immediately. y is less than negative 3x plus 5. And equation 2 is 2x minus 10. And we'll go ahead and graph. And you'll see yourself with the four sections. There they come. And again, we shaded this region. We can do this by hand as well. And you can do a bunch of them. I think you get the idea there. I'm not going to walk through every single one of these. The difference here is that you're just shading different regions. All right, But shade below, I'm sorry, it's going to end up being above this one. It's going to be above this one. It's going to be below this one because the negative would switch the sign. It's going to be above this one because the negative would switch the sign. Okay, So we can walk through all of those. All right, last one, I'm going to do this one with four inequalities because this gets a little more complicated. When I'm done with this, try problems 23, 29, and 37. A couple to try. OK, equation. How many colors do I have? Let's see if I can do all four. We'll go black. We'll go red. We'll go green. And we'll go blue. All right, so equation.
equation one in black. Y is less than or equal to negative x plus 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're going to go here and up one over one. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And actually, by using the intercepts, I know it's going to hit a 10 also. So we're going to have that's equation one. Equation 2, uh, let's do intercepts here also. 24 divided by 2 is 12. Uh, so x is 12, and y is going to be 8. 24 divided by 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Connect those. And while we're at it, let's put the arrows on this. We're going to be below this one. We're going to be above. Let's see, y is less than on the other one as well. We're going to be below this line also. x is greater than 0. All right, so here's where x is 0. That's the y-axis. And y is greater than 0, so that's the x-axis. So what that's saying is we're going to be in quadrant 1. A whole lot going on here, but... What works for all of these? We need to be below the black. We need to be below the red. We need to be above the blue and to the right of the green. It's just a little tiny area in there, right in there, where it crosses and works for all of those equations. Okay? All right. So 23, 29, and 37. Give those a shot. All right, last one. We've got a word problem here. Let's work through this. A retired couple has through up to 30000 to invest. You're going to invest in treasury bills yielding 5% and corporate bonds yielding 8%. As the financial advisor, you recommend at least 20 in treasury bills, at most 5 in corporate bonds. Okay, so treasury bonds are going to be X. So treasury bonds, X, have to be at least 20000 greater than or equal to 20,000. And in this problem, they said we're going to assume x and y are in 1,000, so 20. y needs to be less than 5,000. It says at most, so less than or equal to 5. And we know that x plus y has to be less than or equal to 30,000, because that's how much they have to invest. Notice that since the corporate bonds have 8%, and the treasury bills have 5%, that doesn't matter in terms of how much to buy of each one. Okay? So, extraneous information. X is greater than or equal to 20. Let me count by, how about fives here? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Label these. So X is greater than 20. Oops, solid line. Excuse me. And we're going that way. Y is less than or equal to 5. Solid line here. We're going up above that one. And X plus Y equal 30. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Using my intercepts, we can connect these two lines. And we need to be less than this black line. All right, so we need to be above the red, below the black, and to the right of the 20. And that would work better if my lines synced up better. So let me put this in the graphing calculator real quick so that I would get better lines. Y is less than or equal to 5 y is less than negative x plus 30. Let's go ahead and graph that. And actually, I'm going to change my window here so that I go from negative 15 to, let's go to 35. And let's go from negative 10, that's fine, to 35. And how about we count, count by fives? Let's try graphing that. There's five. There's 30, and x equals 20 would be right in this region. All right, so there's a nice triangle right there. 
where we're going to graph this. All right. So I apologize for the calculator on the screen. It doesn't have all the features that your calculator and your hand have, but we're going to get that nice triangle right there. All right, see if you can do 45. Knock that out. Any questions, we'll go over this in class. And good luck with all those problems.